Hi, in this video, we are going to continue to set up IIS on Windows 10. This is a list of suggestions um, how you should use this video. The notes for this video can be found here, which is loaded here. So in the last video, we installed um, IIS or we could just say that we switch on the IIS okay, um, on Windows 10. Now we are going to use it. Of course, there's a, there are two ways of launching IIS. One, uh, launching the IIS manager. One way is to use the shortcut that, that we created last time. You can click on that. You'll launch the IIS manager. The other way is to actually search for the Internet Information Services Manager. You also launch the IIS Manager. Okay, I'm going to use the shortcut way from this point onward. So we launch the IIS Manager, and we this is the server and it's running. You can stop and you can start. Okay, you can also go to the default website here. Here, here is the default website, not the not the ASP Donut client here. You can go to the default website, you can stop the default website or start the default website. Okay. And you can browse the default website from two locations. One location is make sure the default website has been started and you say I want to browse the website. Click on that. it will be launched here sorry I, it was hidden so this is the default website as one way you can launch as you can see this is just called a local host okay another way to launch the website is um, from here you say default website right click right click manage website and you want to browse left click so you will be here as well. The third way, I'm sorry, I mentioned two ways, but actually that's the third way is directly paste the local host here. You go to the default website as well. Okay. And where is this web page? Where is this website? Okay. And, um, let me see. I think you can. No, that's the default document. Oh, explore is here. Okay, if you want to find out where is the, so where is exa where exactly is this web page? You can go to explore here, click on explore. They will open up a uh, Windows Explorer for you, so you can see that this is in C drive. Uh, I N E T in tpup w w w root. This is the default folder. And this is the file. If you look at this file in say Firefox directly, hey, this is the file, okay, that you are looking at here. So, so if you want to create things here, I mean, if you want to create a web page here, you can actually, you know, create a web page here and then serve it or create a subfolder here and serve it, so on and so forth. I'm not going to do that, that just takes. Um, too much time. I'm going to serve a web page later when we create a uh, alias or virtual directory, whatever you want to call it. But um, if you want to, this is the default location for all the web pages that you want to serve. Okay. All right. That is interesting. Okay. But before we move, before we move on to the next video, um, you must be wondering if you have a web server running here. 
Okay, this is the default website, and then this is your web server. Your web server running here. Um, how can we switch it on and off? Of course, you can do it here. How can we tell it not to switch on when we switch on the computer? Because it's not a good idea to have a web server running at the background when you want to play game or to write some big programs. Okay, and because this just take up too much system resources. Okay, so let's close this. Let's close that and let's search for services and view local services here. Okay, so we go to view local services. Um, if you scroll it all the way down, you should be able to find something called World Wide Web Publishing Service, and that is the default service. So if you go to World Wide Web Publishing Service, you realize the service is running. You can s stop the service here. It takes a while. When you stop the service here, even when you launch the IS Manager, you realize that the service stopped because now you can start it from here. Okay, so the service has been stopped. And you will realize there's something called automatic here. That means when you switch on the switch on your computer, this service will be started automatically. That is not a good idea because you don't want to have this thing running a background when you try to use your system resources to do some other stuff. Okay, like play a big game. Okay. So I want to change this to menu. Let me right click here, look at properties, left click properties and say I want to change this to menu. Okay, so now if you want to run IIS, you have to. Okay, I'm done here, so we can close the services. I don't need this anymore. Okay, so now you change this to menu. Let's close this. So every time if you want to start IIS, you have to physically click on the IIS manager and start the server okay so that's a good thing so you you can it actually consciously force yourself to start the web server when you do any development and you don't want to waste system resources when you do other things okay let's talk about something else um, we let's, let's um, launch the website from I think I've already launched the website, but let's launch it again. Um, let's want, let me browse again. So we are looking at this, right? So we know that this is IS because it's, it's written here IS. What if you have Apache run? Uh, you have Apache installed on the on the same machine and you have XM and you want to start Apache. So you do that. Oops. You will not be able to start Apache and they are going to give you some really scary error messages like shut down unexpectedly, something bad happens and so on and so forth. What happened is that is a port conflict because when you run IIS, you use up the port 80 and Apache also try to use port 80. Okay, it doesn't work. So if for any strange reason you want to run Apache on the same machine, you have to choice number one. Stop your IIS from the here. So my IIS stopped. Now you can start your Apache because it uses port 80 okay choice let's say you don't want to do this you say I want to run two at the same time I really don't see any reason why you want to do that on a developing developer machine you know a, de um, a developed machine let's say you are running it on a live server server maybe it makes sense but if you are writing code I don't think you can write two type of code at the same time so you shouldn't run two at the same time. 
but let's say you have to do that for some strange reason. Let's 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 try that. Okay, stop my Apache, start my IIS, and you have to run Apache at the same time. You really want to, for any strange reason. Okay, you have to change the code, uh, the the port of the Apache web server. So launch the HTTP CMD configuration file. Search for listen. Okay, search for listen eighty. All right, here it is. So search for listen eighty and say I want to change this to eighty eighty. I'll save now when you start you realize that Apache is using port 8080 and it's working now so to assess this place you have to go and type in localhost eighty eighty for the Apache web server running on your machine. So you're looking at Apache web server. So port 80 by default localhost is port 80. So you look at IIS and this is your Apache. Okay. IIS Apache. Um, I do not recommend doing this. It's very confusing in the middle of the night and um, I don't see any point doing this. Okay. Because if you're coding on C sharp, you will not be coding PHP, right? You only have one keyboard, I assume. So we can. Um, so personally, I like to put this back to normal. So let me close this and stock this and configure this again and look for listen eighty and change this back to 80 okay so now you cannot start this one now you have to stop your IS before you can start your Apache okay alright so that resolve the conflict problem so both are running 80, uh, port 80 now Okay, so I can start my eyes. Okay, I think that is a good place to stop. In the next video, we are going to discuss how to um, create virtual directory or alias, if you like to call it. Uh, they basically mean the same thing. So um, it's a good place to stop. So the next video, we are going to do the virtual directory. Okay, thanks for watching. Let me close this and close this. And close this. Thanks for watching. Bye.